last class we have handled the uh, basic properties of pure ion and uh, related phenomena. Uh, for example, the behavior of the uh, solute atom. Uh, from this class, we will briefly uh, remind, recall the, the basic thermodynamics to understand the behavior of the solid solution. So the title is Basic of Thermodynamics in Solid Solution. And you might be familiar with this kind of the uh, some dynamic state function. So what what is the state function in handling the thermodynamics? We usually say about the state function. So here, free energy, enthalpy, and entropy. All of this uh, function is the state function. So what is the definition of the state function in thermodynamics. The meaning of the state function is that the value is only dependent on start and end. So it does not depend on the path. So when we evaluate, for example, let's see, here is state one, and here is state two. And the free energy in this state is G1, and this is G2. And there are many ways to, for system to go from this one. But the property defined by free energy uh, state function, the difference is only dependent in final and initial condition, initial state. So, so that's why we call it free energy, enthalpy, and entropy as a free a state function. So you have to remember what is the meaning of the state function when you handle those kind of uh, property. So this is free energy. And as you know, free energy is the most important measure to know whether the system is in equilibrium or not. Or when we compare two states, which one is more stable. Let's see, this is this axis is free energy. Then which state is more stable state? Stage two. So you might know that so the system always want to decrease it's free energy. So we will handle why the system wants to decrease uh, its free energy in later slide. But you have to remember the system like to reduce its free energy. The free energy, ah, one more thing is that, that is, uh, there is one assumption, one condition to measure the state of the system as a free energy. The condition is the temperature and pressure should be constant. In that condition, the system always move to reduce its free energy. The reason why we use the free energy as a measure of the, those kind of uh, irreversibility or spontaneous reaction. Spontaneous means that the system want to move from this one to this one. That means spontaneous. It is similar to irreversible process. 
The reason why we use the free energy as a measure of those kind of irreversibility is most of the reaction we handle are we handle are concerning at com constant pressure or constant temperature. So that's why we use the free energy as an important measure in uh, reaction thermodynamics or solution thermodynamics. As you can see in this figure slide, <coughs> free energy is a linear combination of the enthalpy and entropy. And here T is absolute temperature. Roughly speaking, roughly speaking, the enthalpy is a heat content of the system. How much heat is contained in the system. And the entropy is the way of the number of the way of the configuration. We will handle this in later uh, slide. And just remember that the entropy is something which is related with the randomness or number of configuration of the system. So we multiply temperature T here. So intuitively, you can understand to the contribution of the enthalpy entropy will be different according to the increase or decrease of the temperature. So what can you expect? When we increase the temperature, which term will be important? Entropy term will be important, right? So that is why the, for example, when you expect that entropy term is important, then the randomness well, the configuration, number of configuration of the system will be important, right? As we increase the temperature. That is one of the reasons why you can observe the solid to liquid, liquid to gas transition as you increase the temperature of the system. As I mentioned, the, the system wants to move to reduce its free energy. So the system will not move when any change in pressure, temperature, or such kind of things increase its free energy. Then the system, the system will stop, which means that any change in the condition increase the free energy, like this one and this one. But you can notice that state B and state A is different. There is some free energy difference between these two states. However, these two states satisfy this condition. In state B, the system will be stay there unless sufficient energy to overcome this barrier is given. Right? But when sufficient fluctuation of the energy occurs to overcome this energy barrier, then the system in state B will spontaneously move more stable state A. So we can call this state B as a metastable, not equilibrium state. 
called metastable equilibrium. Okay, let's see more detail about the enthalpy and entropy. Here is our enthalpy. As you run the enthalpy in the thermodynamic class in the undergraduate class, the enthalpy is a linear combination of the internal energy and its volume product by the pressure. The internal energy of the system comes from the bonding energy of the lattice vibration. And this is a function of the temperature. And also, the heat capacity of the system also depends on its volume against the external pressure. So that's why we can write down the enthalpy as a function, a linear combination of the internal energy and its volume. For condensed matter, like liquid or solid, the contribution of its volume to enthalpy is negligible. So, roughly, we can write enthalpy of the solid or liquid it's almost the same to the internal energy of the system. Because the enthalpy is related with the heat content of the material, it is closely related with the heat capacity. What is the heat capacity? Here is the definition of the heat capacity. The heat capacity is defined by the amount of heat absorbed per unit change in temperature. So when you heat up the material by one degree, then there should be some amount, specific amount of heat, which should be provided into the material. So that's why we call that's what we call heat capacity. So the definition of heat capacity Q. At constant pressure condition, the heat input or heat release from the system is equivalent to the change of the enthalpy. <coughs> that is the definition of enthalpy is PV and when we consider two state, state two and state one at constant pressure. And the difference between these two states Right? So, what is the change in internal energy? Remember the first law of the thermodynamics. What is the first law of the thermodynamics? It is related with the energy conservation. 
So what the first law of thermodynamics tells you is right? The change of internal energy comes from the heat absorbed by the system and the work done by the system, right? One thing you have to remember is internal energy is state function, but heat or work is not the state function. But the difference is state function, right? So when we put this one and this is work done by the system. So at the constant pressure, the difference, the, the change of entropy is equivalent to the heat absorbed by the system. Right? Any question? So at constant pressure, the heat capacity measured at constant pressure is given by this. I did talk about this one. Sometimes people want to know how we measure the enthalpy or entropy of some material because it is related with the heat capacity. By measuring the heat capacity of the material, we can evaluate the enthalpy and entropy of the system. Here, when we, we can measure the heat capacity has increased the temperatures. So by defining, by defining the enthalpy at room temperatures as zero, we can evaluate the enthalpy change from that temperature. So here is the heat capacity measured by experiment, then when we integrate this curve from room temperature, ambient temperature, that it will give you the enthalpy of the system at given temperature. So because we define the enthalpy of the system at ambient temperature at zero enthalpy at 298 Kelvin is zero, and it will increase when you temp increase temperature, and it, it will have minus sign when we decrease the temperature. One thing you have to remember is that people would like to think about that thermodynamic is very theoretical and mathematical and something like that, but base basis of the thermodynamic is empirical equation, which should be observed or measured. So when we, when you use some thermodynamic calculation program, for example, thermocalc, empty data, or matcalc, those kind of program has some hidden box called database. In that database, when you have a chance to look at that uh, database, all of the entropy and entropy of pure material is formulated in some uh, mathematical form, and each coefficient of the function based on 
the measured one. For example, uh, in particular in pure material. So you have to remember, you have to bear in mind when you dig, dig and dig and dig the thermodynamic database, the basis is a measured and observed one, not theoretically derived one. Okay? Okay, let's move some difficult part, entropy. Actually, entropy, the difference of entropy in two states is a kind of the difference, the degree, degree of irreversibility or degree of spontaneous reaction. Let's consider, let's imagine these two cases. Here we have one box and here is some wall. And we put ideal gas in one side of the box and the pressure is P. When I remove this wall, what happened? You can see, you will see this state B, the pressure of the system is re reduced by half and the gas will distribute homogeneously in whole box. This is a free expansion, right? Are there any difference in temperature at that process? Is there any dif temperature difference? Temperature will decrease. Raise your hand. Temperature will increase. No, there is no change. Right. Democracy win, right? There is no temperature change when the, this kind of free expansion. Just imagine. You may run about the uh, state equation of ideal gas, right? Here, pressure, volume, gas constant, and temperature, right? What is the pressure and volume of state A and state B? This is state A, let's see, this is state B. This is the same. So the left hand side of the equation is the same, so there will be no temperature change. It means there will be no change in enthalpy. Then what cause this reaction occur, even though there is no change in enthalpy? Because it, this reaction will increase the entropy. In classical thermodynamics, the increase of entropy means the movement of the system in irre irreversible way, spontaneous way. With respect to the 
statistical thermodynamics, the increase of the entropy means the system exists in more probable way. Can you understand what is more probable way? Intuitively, you can understand when I remove the world from this one, that is not probable that all of the atom is confined here, right? This is more probable state. Why that is more probable state? There is much more possibility to look at this state. Of course, there are some very little possibility to see this state. But in most case, you will have a chance to see this state. That is the concept of the entropy in statistical thermodynamics. In classical thermodynamics, the increase of the entropy means the degeneration of the capability of work into the heat or heat flow from high temperature to low temperature. I will discuss in a later class. This is two definition of the entropy, which is defined by classical thermodynamics and statistical thermodynamics. Here, for the classical thermodynamics, the change of the entropy in the system is heat appeared. Heat appeared in the system divided by temperature. I say appeared not absorbed. That is quite important difference. And for classical thermodynamics, the entropy is a function of number of configuration, number of way the system can exist. Simply, you can notice that in state B, there is much more number of way of configuration of the system than the state A. So, The entropy in state B has much more value than state A. That's why when the system move from state A to state B, increase the entropy. This equation is first, firstly suggested by Boltzmann. And he thought that the entropy of the system is related with the number of configuration, the way of existence. When you consider two system, combining of two system, the entropy of these two systems can be added, right? But how about the configuration, the number of configuration, the number of way of the existence? You have to, to, uh, to evaluate the number of way of configuration. You have to multiply. 
right? So, there is some relationship between entropy and the number of configuration. Entropy and number of configuration. This can be add. This can be, this should be multiplied. So what would be the relationship between entropy and configuration? You have to take log. Right? So from this configuration, <coughs> the entropy is proportional to the log of number of configuration. And the proportional constant is called Boltzmann constant. Okay? I would like to briefly say in concept of classical thermodynamics why Q divided by temperature, not Q, is a measure of irreversibility of the reaction. Let's consider this process A and B. In process A, we do some work on this system. This system is temperature T2, and this is heat reservoir. Heat reservoir means when you put some heat into the system, the temperature of the system is not changes because it is huge volume. In process A, we convert work into the heat Q and give this heat to this T2 reservoir. And then move heat transfer, transferring this heat from T2 reservoir to T1, which is lower in temperature. As you can understand, this is a kind of spontaneous reaction. When we work and converting work into the heat and move heat from high temperature source to low temperature source. This is irreversible, spontaneous reaction. This is process directly. We directly convert the work into heat and trans give this heat to T1 reservoir. As a result, in overall concept, the process is the same. Make converting work into heat and giving this heat into T1 reservoir. So in both system, the irreversibility, the degree of irreversibility is the same. Because the starting and end is the same. But as you can see, the process A consists of two steps. One is converting work into heat and transport to T2 reservoir. And step two, we have to transfer heat from T2 from T1 reservoir. Because process A consists of these two steps, when we compare the irreversibility of step uh, okay, see. 
step one and step three. We can say the irreversibility of step three is greater. Even though we put the same quantity of the heat into the system, the irreversibility, the degree of irreversibility is different. That's why we divide the heat appear in the system by temperature to measure the irreversibility of the process. That's why, that's also why that the change of entropy indicate the degree of spontaneous reaction. Question? Usually this amount of the content should be uh, taught in one month or something like that in regular thermodynamic class, but I have to compress the content. But I think you can understand the basic concept of those kind, this kind of thermodynamic function. I think this is the most difficult part of the content in this class. Why? Then why entropy is increased or generated when the system go through irreversible process? Why is the entropy is generated by irreversible process. Usually we can, we usually say the system go through spontaneous reaction then delta S will be larger than zero. It means that the entropy is generated, increase, right? Let's see this, not well drawn, but this system is surrounded by heat reservoir, heat reservoir, and this is a liquid. This red one is liquid. And this dot is a vapor, vapor of the liquid. And the vapor pressure at temperature T is equivalent with external pressure. At first, let's consider the spontaneous uh, reversible reaction. Reversible. At first, we slightly, infinitesimally decrease the external pressure. <coughs> then this piston will go up. Right? And then we'll, we increase the external pressure again, then it will stop. Right? And by repeating this kind of movement, let's see, let's say the volume, for example, at first, This is the first position of the piston, and this is the last position of the piston. Then this volume is free. During this kind of repeated reversible process, the work done by the system is given by this one. The volume against Following expansion against the pressure, 
this is work done by the system during reversible process. But the temperature of the system is constant because it is surrounded by heat reservoir T, which means when we consider the change of internal energy, here is U, E is the same. I, I usually sometimes use U or sometimes use E, and U is Q minus W, and here Q minus P external V. But the temperature of the system is the same. The internal energy is zero. So change of internal energy is zero. So this is zero. So let's say the heat absorbed, this is heat absorbed by the system during the uh, reversible uh, expansion. So let's say this is heat absorbed during reversible process. And Q reversible is equivalent to the external and V. In this process, how much is the entropy change? When we consider the entropy change in the system, the temperature to T, the heat appeared in the system is Q reverse. How about the entropy change in surrounding? Entropy change in the heat reservoir. The heat transfers from surrounding to system. So the heat reservoir lose. Hit Q. So the total entropy change will be zero when you consider the entropy change in the system and surrounding. So the total entropy change zero. Everything okay so far. Next, let's consider when we suddenly decrease the external pressure at, from the initial state. We suddenly decrease the pressure by delta P. Then the piston will move upward the same way. And at this position, we increase the pressure to stop the piston. Then, how much work done by the system? Volume expansion against the pressure. So, work done by the system. This is reversible. Irreversible. Work done by the system. The change of internal energy is this one, and this is work done by the system is P minus external and delta P product B, right? Because the external pressure is decreased by the delta P, the work done by the system is decreased in irreversible process. Any question? And again, 
there is no temperature change, so the change of internal energy is zero. So the Q is This is work, and this is work max. You can easily understand that this is smaller than this pressure. This is maximum work, which can be done by the system. When the process occurs in irreversible way, the work done by the system is always less than the maximum work. Therefore, the Q should be observed from the surrounding is smaller than the Q observed during reversible process. Right? Now, let's think about the entropy change. At first, we think about entropy change in surrounding. This is obvious. Right? Heat Q leaves the surrounding during the expansion of the cylinder. Here is the most difficult part. How about the entropy change in the system? Is this this one? This is heat absorbed from the surrounding. I mentioned that the entropy is heat appeared in the system. Let's return to our work. The initial and final state of the system is the same. But the system do not as much work as in it does in reversible system. When the process occurs in irreversible way, then what happened about the capacity of the system to work? For example, there is a state 1 and state 2. The system can work, maximum work, in reversible way, but it cannot do. as much work as in reversal way. So what happened? What happened of the loss of the capability to work? This loss of capability of work degenerated into heat. So the amount of heat appeared in the system should be written like this. And this is if I compare this one and regardless of the irreversibility of the process, 
the entropy change of the system is the same. But when we consider the entropy change in total, this is always positive. Okay? Clear? Let's think about this one uh, one more time and see you in next Tuesday. Okay? <laughs>